Here's our computations and unit conversions lesson on application questions involving force. Now, in the metric system, the derived unit of force is called the Newton, with the symbol capital N. And in physics, force is defined as mass times acceleration. So for example, you could take a, a book and drop it on the ground, and it exerts a force on the ground when it hits it. So in symbol form, capital F is for force, little m is for mass, and a is for acceleration. And it's implied here that this is mass times acceleration, so there's a multiplication in there. Now the metric system, excuse me, the metric uh, units of mass are kilograms, and the metric units of acceleration are meters per second squared. So when we put them together, our force units are going to be kilograms times meters per second squared. And that's a bit long to write out, so we have this new unit or new notation. One newton is going to be one kilogram times meter per second squared. So on our table of equivalences, we actually have this equivalence that one capital N newton is the same as or equivalent to one kilogram meter per second squared. And this is a little dot here implying that, you know, there was a, a um, excuse me, a multiplication just like we see up here. So this may be a new unit for some of us. Uh, you don't have to have physics to have um, as a requirement for this course, or we're just going to be doing some basic force calculations. In your other program course specific uh, classes, you know, whatever depth you need to, you will go at that time. This is just a very, very cursory introduction to force. Here's some basic application questions. So we're going to give you that the gravi gravitational acceleration of the Earth, little a, is given as 9.81 meters per second squared. Uh, depending on your background, you may have used 9.81, you may have used 9.8. For the purposes of this course, we'll use the constant 981. In your other courses, of course, you'll have to ask what constant they want to use. And our formula that we just learned, force is equal to mass times acceleration. And we're going to determine the downward force exerted by the mass of some various objects. So the first one we're going to look at is something small, so maybe a book, and the book weighs roughly a kilogram. Here's our formula. Force is mass times acceleration. Put in our mass, 1 kilogram. Put in our acceleration, 9.81 meters per second squared. Perform the calculation. 1 times 9.81 is just 9.81. And we saw this before. Kilograms times meters per second squared is a kilogram meter per second squared. And in our new notation, we can write this kilogram meters per second squared as newtons. And very often in forces, we do round these numbers to whole numbers. We will sometimes, not always, in this case I've chosen to do it. So I'm rounding the 9.81 to 10. So the downward force exerted by a book is going to be 10 newtons. So not a very, very strong force. Let's try a maybe a bigger person, a 100 kilogram person. Same methodology. Write your formula, mass times acceleration. Plug in your given information, 100 kilograms for the mass, 9.81 meters per second squared for the acceleration. Do the multiplication, 100 times 9.81 is the 981 kilogram meters per second squared. Use our new unit, force is 981 newtons. And again, if we were rounding this, say we did want just a, uh, a whole number to maybe be one, one significant digit, we could say it's 1,000 newtons. Uh, for the purposes of, the purposes of this video, I've just left it as 981 newtons. Let's now look at something a little bit bigger. So a one ton, maybe a very small car, a smart car or a beetle, something like that. So a metric ton, I remember the, you know, the, the uh, spelling here, T-O-N-N-E, that's metric. So we have from our tables of equivalences that a metric ton is 1,000 kilograms. And why do we need this? Well, we've already established that our mass, in order to use this formula in the metric system, mass has to be in kilograms. We don't have kilograms. We need to convert to kilograms. So there's our formula again. Force is mass times acceleration. There's our mass. Now we've now changed the one ton to 1,000 kilograms. And there's our 9.81 meters per second squared for our acceleration. So don't forget, when you're using formulas, there could be criteria for using it. And in this particular case, our criteria is mass in kilograms, acceleration in meters per second squared. 
perform the calculation and we get 9810 kilogram meters per second squared but also let's put this in our Newton notation so 9810 Newtons now this is a relatively large number so we want might want to use a metric prefix to you know make it maybe a bit easier for other people to read so we don't have to write so many zeros possibly and we can change from Newtons to kilonewtons and again from the metrics prefix tables we should be comfortable with this now there's a thousand newtons in one kilonewton so our newtons will cancel out and now we have that our force is 9.81 kilonewtons and this is going to be something that you'll see very commonly in your um, your physics course in semester two where we're going to be using kilonewtons and meganewtons and you know larger larger values like that Here's another application question for force, a little more comprehensive. We want the force on a column that supports a load of 20,000 kilograms. And again, we're given that our gravital, gravitational acceleration is 981 meters per second squared. And our formula for force is mass times acceleration. Now, load is just a different word for mass. And this is something, again, you'll see in some of your program core courses. So we're introducing it here so you'll have an understanding of it in case you've never done physics before. If you didn't understand the word load, then you might actually look at the units and see kilograms and say, well, oh, wait a minute, kilograms, well, that has to be my mass. So that's sort of where we get the relationship that load is mass. Formula, force is mass times acceleration. Plug in our values. Now I've chosen to write the mass or the load in scientific no notation. So 2 times 10 to the 4th, remember, 1, 2, 3, four zeros so there's our power of four for the kilograms and our 981 meters per second squared perform the calculations and we'll get 1.962 times 10 to the fifth kilogram meters per second squared we should be comfortable now that this is 1.962 times 10 to the fifth newtons but again that's a pretty big number so let's maybe convert the newtons to something bigger and let's convert it to kilonewtons for now. So I know that there's a thousand newtons in one kilonewton. My newtons will cancel out. And that's going to be 196 kilonewtons. Okay, so again, you know, we're going to be, uh, you'll be getting a fair amount of practice with this, both in this course and your other courses with uh, kilonewtons, meganewtons, etc.